So hi, I'm BJ Miller, part of CareDoc, and this is the sort of follow-up uh, leftover questions that we didn't get to during our webinar today on communication. So with that, over to you, Sonia. Thanks, BJ. All right, starting things off. What are some things that doctors wish their patients would ask? What are some of the things that doctors wish their patients would ask? Ah, great, thank you. Um, so as a doctor, it's tricky. A, you don't have much time. You got B, you got a lot usually to convey, and it's tricky and often tricky information to convey. Uh, and it's charged, and you're not sure what to say, what the person can hear, wants to hear, should hear. So you, as the patient, can take a lot of that guesswork out and just be proactive. So I wish, as a doctor, I would wish my patients would tell me what they need. I wish, you know, if they have a question, I really want them to ask it, even if I don't have the answer, even if it seems like an awkward question, even if it's a question we've discussed 30 times before. So I really wish my patients would ask me what, tell me what's on their mind and ask me what they're worried about and what they're wondering. And I also wish my patients would say to me, hey, I didn't understand what you just said. Can you go over that again? So I really wish my patients would tell me if to the degree which they're hearing me or not. I wish patients would uh, tell me who they are, like what's what matters to them, what's important to them. Um, if a patient proactively said, hey doc, I'm the kind of person who wants to know everything, so don't spare me any details. Um, even if you think I don't want to hear it or if, it's, if you think it's boring or too emotional, I definitely want to hear it. Um, or, hey doc, I'm the person who I only can take in so much information at any one time, so it'd be really helpful if you told me, if, if we just, you know, one thing at a time and then check in and see how I'm doing before saying anything else. Or if they told me, I'm a, I'm the kind of person who doesn't want to hear any of this. Don't talk to me. Talk to my loved one or talk to my spouse, but don't say anything really charged in front of me. I can't hear it. I would fall out of my chair and be so happy if someone proactively told me how they want to be heard and how they, what works for them. And I'd love it if my patients told me, in other words, who they are. What's, what makes them tick, what flatten them, what flattens them, what makes them expand. Um, so there's there's my list. Okay. Next question is also about um, patient and family interaction, or excuse me, patient and um, clinical interaction. What are some questions that a patient and their family should be asking their medical team if they receive a terminal or very serious diagnosis? So what should patients and families be asking their doctor if they if they've just received a, a terminal diagnosis? Mm -hmm. Did I hear that correctly? Okay. Yep. Um, so one is, you know, that's a very difficult moment. Um, so for you, if you if you and your family are in such a situation, for one, I'd just encourage you to be um, modest in your, you don't, you know, it'd be enough in that one conversation just to hear the news. Um, so and you know, it would be great is scheduling a follow-up visit not too long after that to circle back to questions because in that moment it's very hard to think uh, and I bet you any money as the news settles in over the coming ensuing days that your questions will become more and more clear. So I would I would proactively set up another appointment in short order. Um, so that's one thing. Um, Eventually, though, I would love you, I think it's important to be asking your, your doctor in this, in the context of terminal illness, say, you know, to get clear on whether, if you want to know this, to get clear on prognosis, how much time do you think you might have? You know, I, you might want to ask if, as treatment comes up, the word treatment is a big one, and we mean it in different ways. So when your doctor starts talking about okay, you have a, a terminal illness, but there's this and this and that treatment we can try. Um, it's really, really smart for you to say, hey doc, what do you mean by the word treatment? Mm -hmm. You know, if I have a terminal illness, I'm, I'm assuming that that's not curable. And if it's not curable, then what are we treating? You know, so just ask, what do you mean by treatment? What do you hope, what's the best case scenario that you would hope for from this treatment? What happens if I don't do this? What happens if I say no thank you to treatment? What does that look like? So oftentimes these conversations hinge not on the news of the prognosis, but on what to do about it. Um, and there, uh, when you're ready to talk about that, I would really drill down and get very specific. 
what do these treatments look like? What can I expect from them? What would you hope for them to, what effect would you hope for? Um, what would that do to my daily life? Where would I be spending time? Does this treatment re require that I'm in the hospital, et cetera? Um, and finally, what if I don't do this treatment? What does that look like? Um, and then last in the point in the context of the terminal illness, I love it when my patients proactively bring up the idea of hospice. You know, so you and the family, if you're hearing about a terminal diagnosis, you might say, hey doc, at what point does hospice become relevant? You know, um, or hey doc, I really wanna be at home for all from what time I have left. What treatments are, what can I do at home? What can we do at home to treat this? What service does, do I qualify in my home? If it's not hospice, what are there, are there other home care services? These kinds of questions get practical and get specific. Okay, great. Um, this one is more of a comment, but I think there might be some, some follow-up thoughts to it. There's a dance between what the doctors tell me about my mother's care versus what the rest of the family should hear. The game of telephone is so tricky when balancing privacy and the concern of family members. Right on. So can you say that first sentence again, Sonia, the first step, part of that? Oh, just that there's a relationship between what the doctors are telling her about her mother's care and what she feels the rest of the family should hear. Uh huh. Well, so it gets tricky, especially in, you know, with group dynamics. So the patient may, may want to know everything themselves very often they can't or or don't want to so very often they're deferring to one of their kids or their spouse and so what and then within the family dynamics there may be multiple kids some uh, handle certain things better than others some uh, will be flattened by some information and some amount of news so it gets really tricky depending who the person is the needs uh, may differ and the approach may differ around communication. So it's just very difficult, it's just very hard. So I, I mentioned all that to frame it and also to note that. So you may say to the doctor and say, hey, um, there are certain things I need to be able to talk to you about vis-a-vis -vis my mom's care, especially if you're the healthcare proxy. If you're the proxy that puts you in a, a privileged position and say, hey doc, there are certain things I need to talk to you about as mom's proxy, um, but you know, there are other people in the family I think would would really struggle to hear it, or it could get problematic. So uh, you might proactively say to the doc, certain family members, I think we should have this conversation as a group. Some of these things I need to talk to you, just me. Um, in other words, back to sort of telling people what you need, describing to the doctor, the clinician, the family dynamics that need to be navigated. This gets tricky though if you're not the healthcare proxy. You don't have power per se. If your parent, if your mother in this situation hasn't deputized you officially to the doctor as the protector of information, well then you you're 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 more limited what you can ask of the doctor without your mom in the room, for example. So you got to get clear on what is your official role in this mix. Whatever your official role in this mix is, especially if mom's in the room, you might be able to say something to the doctor like there's certain, we're a complicated family and some amounts of conversation happen to ha need to happen with some people in the room and other parts of conversation need to happen with other people out of the room or something like that, just preface it. So uh, tricky, not knowing any more details of your situation, but the basic bottom line here is to ask, uh, ask your mom what works for her and to tell the doctor and other people involved what's gonna work for in terms of communication approaches. Okay, great. All right, next question. How can I gracefully address a doctor who speaks in condescending tones or is disrespectful? Well, you're kind to want to gracefully approach a doctor who's being a condescending jerk. Um, so, you know, I guess one point would be, you know, check yourself. Is this, is this really, is this guy a jerk? Is he just an ass, you know? Or is this guy just busy and overwhelmed and um, distracted? Because that would beg for a slightly different response, I would think, from you. So, um, if 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 I'll take what you're asking on face value, how do you approach? How do you gracefully approach a doctor who's being condescending and being a jerk? Well, depending on you know, if you got your activist pants on, you can say, "Hey, doc, uh, can I just stop you there?" Um, the the tone is feeling a little off to me. You do realize I'm I'm the patient, or my mom's a patient, or whatever else. Like, 
we need you. We need to we need to make sure you're hearing us. Um, and if you if you can't, if this is not your style, then can you help us find a doctor who could? That may be asking a lot of you to do all that, but that would be a very um, powerful, strong, uh, confident position to work from. You don't. The doctor is there to serve you, um, so you don't have to put up with that, especially when you have choice. You might choose another doctor, or you might have a little teaching moment with that doctor. Those are incredibly powerful. I've talked to a lot of doctors over the years who had a patient do that to them at some point, and it changed their whole practice. So I would encourage you just to be direct, be honest, maintain eye contact, be clear, and you know you're the, you're in the power position. You're the one who's receiving the service. You can go elsewhere. Okay, that's all of our questions about communication. Thanks so much, BJ. Thank you, Sonia. Thank everybody. It's good to be with you today. See you next time.